Hello. Today's video is a response to a question I received on a different video, which right now in hindsight, I wish I had rewatched because I probably could have answered the question faster. I put together early on in this channel's history a video on rate limiting. And there was a question on that video about rate limiting egress traffic basically capping the upload speed. In that video, I used a shaping rate, which is configured under the class of service part of the hierarchy. A shaping rate has a characteristic that it can only be applied to egress traffic. And I just forgot that I had used the shaping rate. The way that I limited traffic in that video was to apply this shaping rate to the interface that my wireless was connected to, effectively capping the egress coming towards me from the internet. So while I saw that reduction in bandwidth, I wasn't actually capping off my download speed coming from my ISP. I was just capping off my access to that bandwidth at the access point I was connected to. So to answer that user's question, you apply the shaping rate to the ISP connection, it's egress by default, that should cap off your upload traffic. This could have just been a message, but since I felt kind of guilty about it, I wanted to make a video that explored bandwidth rate limiting. We'll use a policer to do this, and a policer can be applied to both ingress or egress traffic. There's a couple different ways to set up a policer, and there are situations where you may want to set up a policer and a shaping rate. We'll get into all that here in a moment. Let's head to our lab first, and we'll talk about some of the things we'll do today and some of the resources that are available if you're looking to do this type of work in your own network. So what is shaping doing and what is policing doing? This is gonna be a very simplistic explanation, but essentially, Shaping, and you define a shaping rate, will buffer and queue packets that exceed that rate. So your ability to shape traffic will be connected to the hardware that you have and its ability to buffer and queue traffic. Policing is a hard cutoff, although you can define, actually you do define, a burst rate, which allows you to get a little bursty and hopefully train TCP to smooth itself out. And that's that, that word smoothing is really what these two things try to accomplish in their own way. Although policing is definitely more hard cut off, get your burst rates right so that TCP does the work, whereas shaping is more of the hardware and the buffering and the queuing, which has its downside if you've got big queues or deep buffers and you don't manage things correctly, it can introduce delay because it's trying to buffer traffic. You know, TCP just keeps, you know, like it doesn't know if the switch is buffering traffic that it has exceeded a bandwidth limit. So it's not going to adjust its wind frame, uh, window size. In fact, it might increase it. Whereas with policing, if you have a burst rate that's too small, you're going to get very abrupt drops. And if it's too large, TCP will uh, get a little jagged. It'll jump up and down. It'll introduce a lot of jitter. And that can essentially prevent you from using the bandwidth that you have available. We're going to be using the policer method because I used the shaping rate method in the last video. Even though we're still going to be applying this to do uh, up, you know, basically upload speed policing. Like I said with the last one, I was doing it egress, but I was doing it on the inside of my network, not facing the ISP. So we'll see the bandwidth number stay the same, my download speed, but we should see my upload speed uh, drop down to the value that I give it. Actually lower than that because I'm sharing the network with all the other devices in my house, but we'll see. If you're interested in more details in any of these topics, we have a great day one guide. Just Google Juniper day one guides. You're looking for the one that deals with deploying basic QoS, and it does include verbiage on how to use your shaping rates and some of the concepts around policers for traffic management. When building a policer, we need to know our bandwidth limit and our burst size limit. And we have a calculation we'll use for burst size. There's actually two different ways to do it. In one method, you know the bandwidth that you're targeting, and in the other, you don't. We're going to be focusing on the one where we do know the bandwidth we're targeting. We're going to give tell it like three meg, 
Uh, if we didn't know that, there's an MTU process that's in documentation. We're not going to get into that. You can also limit traffic based on bandwidth percentage. That also gets into a space that we're not going to get into today. As a rule, use the interface bandwidth method if you can. MTU really should only be used if you don't know the available bandwidth on the link. It's a little bit less prescriptive, I would say. Let's get to work, but let's first talk about our guidelines here. You can use your bandwidth policer to rate limit protocol specific traffic. So you can't do family any. Uh, you'll see this today. I'm going, I have a switch. It's a trunk up to my firewall. It is the uplink to the firewall and it is family ethernet switching. I have to create a firewall filter that is ethernet switching. If it was a routed interface, I'd have to create a firewall that was INET or INET 6. It can't be protocol specific, if, particularly if you're doing um, uh, INET. You know, you can have match conditions because this will basically, you build a policer and then you define a firewall filter and you can have match conditions or you can just emit match conditions and match all traffic on an interface that you apply it to. You can't use the bandwidth policer for forwarding table filters. So if you are creating other policies that include forwarding table items, you're not going to be able to have a then or a terminating action that includes a policer statement. And you can't apply it to certain types of interfaces, aggregates, tunnel interfaces, software interfaces, etc. First thing we'll do is define our policer. And I've already done this. I just need to activate it on the interface. So I'm going to get into the config and I'll show you what it looks like. In this case, it is a Ethernet switching filter, as I mentioned. Uh, the first thing we'll do, though, is we'll look at the policer configuration. And I should probably put the name in. And you can see here, it's pretty straightforward. We have a bandwidth limit of 3 meg. That's megabits. Then we have a burst size limit of 1875 bytes. <laughs> I don't know why it's bits and bytes here. But there is some math for calculating this, and it is based on our best practices. So I've got five meg uplink speed through Xfinity. I ran a speed test earlier. I can click show more. We'll come back to that in a second. The bandwidth that I've configured for is three meg. And the calculation is bits per second times five milliseconds equals X and then X divided by eight. So that you get your bytes and that's your burst size. So in my case, it's three meg. So we convert that to three million bits and we take five milliseconds, 0.005. That gives us 15,000. We divide that by 8, we get 1875. And you can see right here that I'm at 5.7. So I've already got this configured. Now if we do show firewall family ethernet, you'll see that I have a rate limit. I have a single term. There's no from. I'm not doing any matching, which means this will apply to all traffic that is on this interface. If you don't have a from statement in a stateless firewall filter, it's a global match. You'll see that I'll accept the traffic and I'll apply the policer. And I have this applied on my uplink interface to my firewall. And right now it's inactive. So let's activate it. All right, that is it. Wait for that to commit. We'll run the speed test again. Actually, you could start refreshing this now. My expectation here is that I will see somewhere around 2 meg upload. That's because there's always, a, I mean, it's the service you're using. I'm connected to my Wi-Fi, which is connected to my home switch, which is connected both to my lab servers, all the other devices that are in my house. I'm sharing that upload bandwidth. If it was a download, it would be much more subtle, you know, a couple meg, but since it's the upload speed and I don't have symmetrical bandwidth because I refuse to pay them to build the fiber infrastructure just to get that bandwidth to my house, uh, that, you know, that's, it's a small number and it has a more visible impact. So this is actually, that's exact, this is actually what I was expecting. That's about normal. I did this earlier and I got about two meg. That's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to roll that back. Obviously, I don't want this configuration to be forgotten. <laughs> I'll be wondering later on why my devices are moving so slowly. If you wanted to apply this on ingress, you would just apply it as an input filter. I applied this as an output filter. As a rule, if you can apply it as an input filter, do that. Why not drop them on ingress? Why process them and, and just to throw them away on the way out the door? In some cases, that's not practical but that is the recommendation. If you have any questions or want to get into deeper detail on any of these concepts, do put comments below and I'll do what I can to get a video together. 
And thank you to the commenter who asked the question that drove this video. I like to source my content that way. So if you have any technical questions, networking questions or anything of the sort, please don't hesitate to ask them. I try to make videos and answer questions whenever I can. Take care, have a great rest of your day.